Hi all, let's look at another absolutely amazing game today. It's Stockfish playing against Leela. This is in TSAC Season 14, End of Season Bonus Final. So this is with the engines choosing their own openings. So Stockfish plays E4 and Leela plays E5. So the time control is 12 minutes with a 3 second increment. Knight F3, Knight C6, Bishop C4, Bishop C5. So Stockfish is not playing the, the more classic, perhaps Roy Lopez, but Joko Piano instead. We have here D3, a very quiet move indeed. D6, and here Knight G5 is played by Stockfish. In normal chess base live book, C3 seems to be the most common approach. For example, like this where both sides are fiddling with their bishops. <laughs> uh, so here, uh, knight g5 hits that f7 immediately, encouraging black to defend with knight h6, which perhaps Stockfish doesn't really like. It prefers white here with that knight on the edge. c3, black castles. h3. a3 is also a move. For example, knight g4, white could castle protecting f2. The bishop could drop back and we get another pretty standard looking position. The knight's going to go back to a more natural square without being pinned necessarily. Even so, that's fine. White has a small edge. h3, knight a5 was played. And the bishop doesn't want to go back to b3 here. This would be nice for black to take out that knight square bishop. Uh, black would actually be slightly better. So we have the bishop b5 move instead. So the bishop can come round this way if it's harassed. Uh, we have a6, bishop a4. Bishop a7. White is potentially here threatening b4. So forking these guys. So the bishop gets out of danger. White castles. King h8. On f5 immediately, you might want to try and move this f pawn immediately. b4, this position with bishop b3, uh, should be okay actually. There doesn't seem to be any big deal about playing f5 immediately. But king h8, queen h5, we have f6, knight f3, and now this knight is targeted, it moves back. Interestingly, uh, f5, the point is here for white to actually look at this crossfire of bishops after bishop g5. To play bishop g5, not bishop takes h6. Uh, so there's an interesting behind the scenes thing. And black has to give up the exchange here uh, with rook f6. The queen's kind of checkmated here. So the bishop is still useful before it retreats back into the position. Uh, so this position is going to be better for white. If white has, uh, it does take on h6, this is actually quite good for black. There is a dangerous g file here against the king. And in fact, bishop takes h3 celebrates that fact. So if g takes rook g6 pins the queen. So it's not about h6, winning a pawn on h6. But rather bishop g5 whilst technically the bishop's on a4. Okay, so uh, anyway, knight g8 was played, not f5, which allows that stuff. d4, we have bishop d7, so parrying this diagonal. And also potentially to kick this queen later. Bishop c2, g6, queen h4, queen e8, bishop e3. We have knight c4, so the knight doesn't go back into the position, but rather forward, knight c4, bishop drops back, knight a5, rook d1, knight c6, going back now, bishop e3, g5, now this, you might think this is a bit controversial, it's weakening some light squares, but don't these pawns look a little bit aggressive for the white king potentially, especially after this next move, I wonder if you can guess, if I give you five seconds, black to play. Okay, super aggressive leader, h5. We have knight bd2. Now, 
it's interesting in these moments with this stirring contest here between these bishops that d5 could be an important question for white uh, because there's a potential chain reaction of taking here and taking here and hitting e8 now in this instance of d5 taking here d takes black has an intermediary move bishop f4 which actually traps white's queen so c takes queen d8 and <clears throat> the white queen is trapped so d5 is not working here but it's amusing to check this out on a few occasions uh so knight bd2 instead h4 the queen goes to h2 queen h5 so it looks as though leaders the aggressor with the pawns much more aggressive pawns rookie one is played here on d5 in this instance bishop takes takes bishop f4 is good so for example g3 h takes and here bishop e3 check is possible and then taking here black's much better there so it doesn't work there either d5 so rookie one knight g e7 uh if here g4 instead that looks aggressive unfortunately the queen is quite useful on h2 we just take on h4 that's fine and nice for white so knight g e7 bishop d1 um now here in this on this occasion d5 again the mechanics do not work well for white after bishop takes d2 yeah this is just uh crumbling for white the, the knight's hanging now as well so yeah uh bishop d1 queen goes back to h7 so the queens mimic each other <laughs> preferring the h2 and h7 squares to any other square on the board in this particular position bishop b3 let's check this out again d5 taking here there's bishop f4 again and on this occasion bishop takes d2 so bishop b3 knight g6 king h1 knight f4 queen g1 if bishop takes f4 instead then g takes this position should be okay about even so uh, queen g1 knight d3 the rook moves knight goes back rook one knight goes back playing around toying around rook a1 queen f1 now we have knight f4 d5 finally here now in this particular instance uh it is actually a favorable chain reaction this d5 for winning material on bishop takes e3 that is so for example d takes and there's two pieces hanging and and then there's a rook attacked as well on bishop takes d2 so this is unfortunate uh for black if black's best is bishop takes h3 this isn't good enough this position white's in the driving seat there big advantage let's have a look at that for a moment again so if the bishop dropped back then c takes d7 just winning material if the bishop took on d2 then c takes is hitting the rook so really uh black has to do something else something far more radical for this d5 on this particular instance so in fact leader plays knight e7 just offering an entire bishop uh so bishop takes a7 to imprison it now with b6 so it's quite an amusing position this bishop shot out of the game so the the game was recommended to me because of this this incident here like people thought white was winning now uh but basically what is black's compensation doesn't it take time to win back that material or is black pushing forward here with these advanced pawns somehow with the entrenched knight on f4 we see white playing queen c4 so there's a real maze of variations here uh if queen takes a6 to carry on on the greed theme it seems uh f5 is an important ingredient here because if queen h5 queen b7 going into the black position actually could end in tears for black uh white's white's in the driving seat here there's no big deal it seems necessarily uh so it seems that the key ingredient is to play f5 here 
and for example bishop a4 this situation with queen h5 starts to get really uh, interesting from a black perspective for example like this and you might think so there's no interest in getting this piece back that's right there's interest in installing a form pawn instead <laughs> so we have knight g3 check this is a key idea so here installing a form pawn and bringing the rooks and the queen to celebrate that form pawn and white would have to give up the queen black's getting a big advantage there and the bishop's still the prisoner over there so some really interesting variations which are kicked off there so instrumental to that is f5 it seems uh, you know to get a knight to g3 later as we saw the mechanics of that to get a form pawn to cover some escape squares to use the heavy artillery after no interest in getting this piece back so yeah some very very interesting variations on queen takes a6 uh, and uh, actually let's just check this again instead of bishop a4 say knight takes g5 queen g6 and then queen takes g2 just for the record uh in say queen b7 here immediately g g4 this position again is very dangerous uh so even though white's eating a lot of material here <laughs> it's it seems as though uh this actually favors black this kind of scenario where these three pieces are just not helping White's king safety. Quite an amusing scenario indeed. And yeah, rook h7 to queen h4 is, is not helping uh, white. So yeah, some really interesting variations. And this seek our tracks again on queen h5. Uh, this is the strongest move. If g4 here, this is probably why we can't always emulate <laughs> Leela. Uh, this is uh, ending up actually good for white it makes a difference to play queen h5 to cut out things uh this is ending up white's in control there so yeah one little slip up and it can be fatal not playing queen h5 but instead playing g4 accuracy needed uh so yeah this situation is the one which is really interesting uh on e takes if knight g1 instead then g4 is the point and here uh, Black's kind of battering down White's king, uh, and the rooks and the you know and the queen and the knight even is swinging by f4 potentially. So this is all really great fun for Black. This bishop's just a spectator piece. Let's use that classic that I used to use, <laughs> spectator piece. Really, indeed, imprisoned Siberia bishop, uh, the two rooks and knight and queen totally coordinated here blacks absolutely winning so you can get evidence here that yeah let's look at another in the main line of what we saw before um yeah just to just to recap there there was that form pawn and earlier sorry in this form pawn scenario there's another thing to show or is there no, I think we've had enough of that. So you get the general picture, I think. Uh, so White has to be careful. Uh, so instead of taking on a6, <laughs> we have queen c4. So we're going back to the main variation of the game. Queen c4 instead was preferred instead of the queen takes a6. So directly hitting c7, trying to distract some of these resources back uh, to be annoyed by this bishop. Uh, so we have rook c8 so yes a bit of a distraction back of at least a rook now here a4 was played you might think hold on isn't bishop takes b6 kind of weakening black's pawn chain at d6 it's true this seems uh, an interesting thing to, to look at as well where now d6 is hit uh, it seems black has at least a draw here with rook b8 this is a poison chalice because of tempo gainers uh, let me just show you queen takes d6 h3 bishop takes queen takes e4 and the idea now look knight f5 is coming in potentially so here knight f5 hitting that queen that poison chalice uh, so knight d3 this actually works like a charm for black all the variations here 
king queen takes there's knight g4 check for king king queen and if king g1 h2 check now if knight takes h2 then there's queen g2 checkmate look at the queen and the two knights here uh and on here there's knight takes d1 black's getting a big advantage so uh basically though black doesn't have white doesn't have to take on d6 white could play the annoying queen a7 and in this situation let's see this is just one scenario where it seems as though with f5 uh being a, a key ingredient to make the attack more spicy uh it seems as though black could end up having a big advantage here with the f4 move uh, for example h3 bishop dropping back f takes rook f2 and there's yeah this rook the rooks on the seventh uh, should be quite nice for black uh, so yeah really involved stuff here let's just recap uh, now uh, okay instead of queen takes d6 so we were looking at queen a7 so this kind of scenario is basically dangerous for white just to recap uh here on rook e f1 then bishop e2 black's getting a bit of big advantage so that's why queen stepping back we're looking at and yeah just to recap queen e3 if for example knight d f1 then this position is fine for black black's getting a big advantage there okay so so rook c8 we have a4 forgetting this bishop takes b6 yeah there's a bit of an adventure there in terms of undermining black's pawns being annoying uh but it doesn't seem to work too well so a4 rook g8 rook g1 g4 h takes bishop takes we have bishop c2 on rook a e1 rook g7 the rooks can double here intensify the pressure before playing h3 and now h2 this is really nice uh with f5 again being instrumental and white is under huge pressure in in this scenario as you can see knight coming to f4 doesn't help black's getting a big advantage there so yeah so that was with rook a e1 there's some examples there so bishop c2 we have rook g7 a5 trying to break the bishop out of siberia h3 g3 we have h2 rook g2 yeah if knight takes h2 then there's queen takes h2 check and rook h7 checkmate knight's controlling the escape squares uh, so rook g2 knight takes king takes knight g6 it's not caring about this breakout attempt it's losing a lot of time for white we have king h1 uh in, on a takes in fact it's not knight f4 but maybe queen h5 which is the most accurate then knight f4 check so for example here queening and this is just checkmating knight g2 checkmate uh so that's uh pretty bad so uh we have actually king h1 knight f4 now bishop d1 on taking the knight here queen h5 this position with e takes f4 cuts out any knight g5s because black wants to play bishop h3 g2 without knight g5 supported by the pawn on f4 so this scenario bishop h3 white's gonna have to do something radical or get checkmated uh, so if white has to like give up the queen or something that's not particularly appetizing uh, so yeah this is all crushing for black basically because of this bishop h3 to g2 mechanism after taking on f4 uh, so bishop d1 we have b5 queen moves and now c5 which hits the bishop uh, d takes was played you might think hold on a sec hold on a sec what about bishop b6 on bishop b6 it turns out knight d3 is good so hitting f2 and look how the communications kind of been disrupted in white's position 
the queen there is is not helping f2 as easily now so say c4 yeah it starts to crumble for white immediately in fact so bishop b6 yeah after this what does white do say bishop e2 knight takes again crumbling knight takes h2 knight takes f2 crumbling uh, like this it's all it's all not very nice that's getting voltages everywhere so d takes c6 and the bishops let go yeah with d takes c6 so black still got a bit of an attack over there knight h4 g takes f4 here there's bishop h3 uh, so with the immediate idea of bishop g2 king takes queening support uh, so white has to try and control h1 here with bishop e2 just to put that on the board tokenly uh, yeah just, we're just queening here so say bishop e2 uh, if I can find my place in the analysis let's see <clears throat> Okay, rook, 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 rook g8. Uh, so bishop e2, rook g8, knight g5 to stop bishop g2 check doesn't help white. This scenario also doesn't help white. White's just crumbling there. So uh, knight h4 was tried. We have bishop e6 supported by the knight on f4 hitting the queen. Now knight h3. Knight moves protecting f2, but dropping uh, tactically a center pawn. Can you see what black plays here? If I give you five seconds, black to play. Okay, taking out a center pawn, queen takes e4 check, and there's mobile pawns now. After if taking, if white takes, then there's knight takes f2 check, winning back the queen. And it's uh, very nice for black. The exchange up, so uh, king takes. It's still very nice for black. The exchange up here in the main line of the game. Yep, this is now very favourable for black. The exchange up, uh, so the smoke's cleared, and uh, black is in the driving seat. As long as a table based draw can be avoided, black could take this to victory. Let's see. The rook's preparing to take off white's rook. F5 is weak. And now black has the pawn mobility to connect with past pawns. White's own past pawn is pretty slow here. Game continued a little bit longer before being uh, adjudicated. Actually, here. Well, both engines thought that black was totally winning, so it was stopped here. A win for black. Game ended here. Uh, just to show a bit more, say e4, and black is just pushing forward very aggressively with the king. White's crumbling. All the pawns are going to drop off. So I'll take you back to the final position. King e2. So a spectacular game with this bishop sack. Uh, the momentum of Black's uh, resources here clearly evidenced that they didn't just look dangerous. It was dangerous, it seems, concretely, with specific moves being injected, like sometimes Queen H5, sometimes F5. Yeah, it, it White had big king safety concerns throughout that. So this was a really uh, immense journey for me to analyze this game. <laughs> I know it's just uh, a fast time limit that there's so many interesting variations it generate behind the scenes. Uh, so if you enjoyed this game video, uh, then please click on the top left box, which should appear shortly to become a member at chessbold.net. Play the YouTubers. You can also test yourself all the variations covered in this game and other games from the improved menu puzzle books. Uh, which also has a link to the annotated game. So be amazed by that as well. Uh, I might do a few as an addendum to this video. Uh, so, yep, comments, questions, donations, see the description. Like, share, subscribe with the notification bell. Really appreciated. Thanks very much. Okay, the puzzle book, immense, 44. 
uh, variations. Now, I've been influenced by Matthew Soda and Natasha Regan. I've given the game a name, Bishop in Siberia. <laughs> and I'm, I'm going to sort of, because uh, they give names, great names to, to the games. Uh, so why not? Uh, mates, uh, let's, let's have a look at the uh, shorter mates that were covered. So I might be able to get them. Uh, so here, uh, let's get rid of Slate of Age. Okay, so black to play and white gets mated. What was this? Uh, Queen G6. I think this was just demonstrating that G2 is weak. And uh, in fact, there wasn't too many on that. Let's, okay, let's broaden, broaden it a bit. Uh, so there's three there. So there was that one. And let's go on to another one. Okay, here I think the mate was Queen takes H2 check. And rook here. So the rook and knight coordinating there. Uh, now here, ah, uh, uh, was it knight f4? No. Ah, uh, uh, queen. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'm naked after doing the video. Queen h1. That's my excuse. Um, hint. <laughs> it's queen h5. That's a bit too subtle for me at this point. Yeah. Queen, queen h5, and now. Knight f4. Ah. Ah, because the point is king h1, bishop takes f3, weakening f3. So putting that huge pressure on f3 is very important. Now we can we can checkmate as seen in the game. Knight g2, I believe. Game variations. But yeah, if you want a greater challenge, just step this up like to 20. And I'm not gonna do it now. <laughs> There's enough embarrassment. Okay, you get the idea. You can apply the filters to all the variations in the game. Have fun with that. That's at Chessbold. Improved puzzle books. And you can see other games there as well. This will be there soon. And it links with the uh, annotated analysis of variations, which was immense for this game. Look at that, Forest. Okay, have fun with that. Thanks very much.